we are our best selves when we when we grow the most is when things get uncomfortable. So we have to look for ways to continue to grow our, our craft and our skills. And and the best way to do that certainly though is is repetition, doing it again and again and again. Hey, welcome back everyone to another episode of the Builder 365 podcast, the podcast dedicated to all things home building. Those of us on the podcast, all the guests that we've had, what do we have in common? We love this industry. We just love this business. And we just want to have this forum, this opportunity just to sit back for a moment, do a little celebrating, get a little insight and have a little fun. But let me just ask you a quick question. Regardless of what you do in the industry, how do you feel about your your presentation skills. Now, most of you don't do a lot of public speaking, but you still have to present uh, in company meetings, in a meeting with a client, maybe at a church or a civic organization. And the question is, how comfortable are you? Now, for some, it's no thank you. When it comes to presentations, I'd rather have a root canal. And for others, it's bring it on. Give me a microphone and a stage and 500 people, and I am in my happy place. And most people, of course, are somewhere in between that. But on today's episode, I'm going to give you some help in that area because it's good, I think it's good for all of us to be able to work on our presentation skills for those moments when we need them uh, the most. We all need some help. And it's not just me uh, uh, offering this assistance today. I am thrilled to be joined by a very special co-host, and you'll know why here in a moment, from the Shore Consulting team, the one and only Michelle Ben-Dean. Michelle, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Oh, let's have some fun. Uh, so why are we talking about, about presentation skills with you? And what I'd love to do, Michelle, is, uh, is for you to tell people, uh, first of all, how long you've been with us and what you do for Shore Consulting, and then we'll get into a little bit of your background that'll give people a little insight. Okay. Well, I have been with Shore Consulting for just a little over four and a half years, and I am a senior consultant, which means I have the awesome opportunity to coach teams uh, every day to help them be the best versions of themselves that they can possibly be so that they can really go out there and give their customers a better experience. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, along those lines here, uh, we'll, we'll get back here to in just a little bit to talking about your previous career and how that set uh, things up. But you're out there day after day working with home builders of all sizes all around North America, all around the United States and uh, accidentally Mexico. That's a story for another day. But what is it? That, who here has accidentally been to Mexico? Anyway, uh, what is it like to visit so many different companies and experience so many different organizational cultures out there? Alyssa, well, I love it. And it's very, very exciting. But I am often just amazed uh, how many similarities and commonalities there are. And um, I, I often find that we often have the same strengths and we often have the same weaknesses, uh, regardless of, of which market, you know, we may be in. Right, right. You, you are a longtime resident of the state of Illinois. Give us one thing that you love about living in Illinois. I mean, come on, the food, the pizza in particular. <laughs> the but, pizza, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In particular. But it's a, different, it's a different brand of pizza in Illinois than sure. it is in the rest of the world. Yeah. Absolutely. We know how to do it here. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Hey, a special thanks uh, to our partner on this podcast. Builder 365 is powered by Open Door for Builders. Easy sales, smooth moves. You can learn more about the work they do to support home builders at opendoor.com slash builder365. Uh, Michelle, before we talk a little bit about presentation skills, uh, before we get into that discussion, I came across an interesting article from the U.S. News and World Report. And using more than 70 metrics and thousands of data points, they came up with their 2024 list of best states by ranking. So this is the best states overall in eight key areas, uh, education, healthcare, economy, opportunity, crime and corrections, infrastructure, fiscal stability, and natural environment. Now, before we go too far on this, we're going to give you the top 10 here. Um, but I will tell you, Michelle lives in Illinois. I live in California. 
Michelle Wood gives, neither one of our states made the top 10 list. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. Well, I could have figured that uh, with uh, California just on based on on how expensive it all is, and and you you, you sort of get a taste of that. But uh, but here we go. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna rattle off the top ten list uh, of the of the best states uh, according to these uh, a, a different criteria, and then we'll talk about it here just a little bit. Number ten is uh, Massachusetts, uh, and I gotta tell you, I, I love. Have you been, Michelle? I have. Yes. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It, it really is. I get that one. Uh, Florida, lot going on there. I wouldn't want to be there this time of year, but but I I, I get that. Um, the state of Washington, spectacularly gorgeous. I, I I I I understand that one as well. Vermont, that was a little hidden gem, but I've spent a little time in Vermont. Have you ever? Did you and you and Greg ever do the changing the leaves no, thing? No, no. I, put it on the list. I, nope. Yeah, I will. Yeah, put it on the list. It's really really cool. Um, number six. Iowa. Now, nothing oh. per, nothing against our friends in Iowa, but that one shocked me just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Although I will tell you uh, that I did have the opportunity uh, to attend the Iowa State Fair many years ago, uh, where I got to see uh, a very, very large cow that was sculpted out of butter. Yeah. Butter. And, and you yeah. haven't lived until you've seen a cow uh, sculpted out of butter. Uh, number five on the list is Idaho. And uh, I, I, I get that Idaho is just the sort of the uh, you know, overlooked for a long time. Suddenly it's the place to be. Uh, number four, Minnesota. So our friend Mike Wise on the shore consulting team, be very happy to see Minnesota yes. make the list. Number three is probably the biggest shock to me, and that is Nebraska. And I, again, I don't want to say anything disparaging about Nebraska. I um, on on 9/11 when 9/11 happened, I was in Washington D.C. So that meant I drove from Washington to my home in California over the course of about three days. And here are two impressions that I had about Nebraska. One, the best patty melt that I've ever had in my life was at a roadside uh, diner in Nebraska. And two, I had no idea how much corn we grow in this country. Until I drove through Nebraska and was like, can I show me anything, a cow, anything? I need to see something besides uh, corn. Yeah. Uh, number two on the list, New Hampshire. Again, if, if you get the chance to be up there, it is it is beautiful. The people are wonderful. I totally get New Hampshire. Uh, but the number one state, the best state to live in, according to U.S. News and World Report on all of their uh, different criteria, is Utah. All right, Michelle, what are you thinking? Did you expect Utah to be that far up on the list? No, I, I didn't. Listen, I've been. I think Utah is very nice. Uh, but number one, I mean, listen, yeah. good for them. Yeah, yeah, good for them. And again, another state that was overlooked for a long time, but now it's just the, the place that people want to be. Uh, but there you have it. That's the top 10 list. What I don't have is the bottom 10 list. I, I'm, I, I don't know what that would do, and I don't want to offend anybody. So we'll just we'll leave it uh, at that. Well, Michelle, let's, let's, talk into, let's talk about presentation skills. And to start, yeah. uh, you might want to tell people a little bit about your earlier career and uh, the importance of great presentation skills to you, I think it'll be obvious. Well, my first career was I was an on-air radio pers personality. So I was an yeah. on-air announcer. So that was my first gig before yeah, yeah. new home sales. Tell us what that was like as a radio personality. First of all, were you live or, live or were you taped? Oh, live. Yeah, uh, that's what was, I thought. Yeah, one, one chance to get it right. And uh, it was exciting. It was fun. It was didn't make a lot of money. It yeah. was terrible hours, but it was a whole yeah. lot of fun. Did you live with this fear, like I'm about to say something stupid? Because like there there are there are YouTube videos uh, by the scores about newscasters with a slip of the tongue saying something that ends up to be incredibly embarrassing uh, during a, a broadcast. Did you live with that fear? No, I didn't. And I'll tell you why. Because I was very thought out. I had a plan. I had a strategy. I followed that plan. I followed that strategy. It was very methodical. I knew what I was going to say, when I was going to say it, and so forth. So I, yeah. I didn't have that fear. I didn't. 
Well, and that has uh, carried through into what you do now. When you join the Shore Consulting team as one of our certified sales trainers, you need to quickly get up to speed on a vast array of sales, customer care, management training, all kinds of material. We handed you a mountain of information and asked you to be able to not just learn it, but to be able to present on all of it. How did you go about learning all of that stuff, and let's face it, we don't give you a lot of time to be able to do it. No, it, there it, it crash learning, if you will, but it's it comes with a, a lot of uh, preparation, practice, uh, reviewing the content and the material again and again and again. So at some point, you don't have to be in your head thinking about, well, what do I want to say next, or where where am I going with this message. There's a lot of uh, man hours that go into doing what, what we do on a daily basis. So let's talk about that because I know this is definitely up your alley. Uh, and I want you to talk about your secret weapon here, although I'm afraid people aren't going to like the answer because everyone wants the, the simple shortcut. But there is a way to do this right. Uh, talk a little about what that way is, please. Yeah, this is not going to, I don't think I'm going to surprise anyone here. And, I, and I, there's no magic pill. The answer is practice. And practice takes time. Practice can get uncomfortable. But it's what we need to do to be our best selves. And the best of the best of the best in any industry, doesn't matter what the industry is, they practice. That That's what we do. We practice. And it's and we practice the fundamentals, the basics over and over and over again. And, and I know that a lot of folks out there, they think, well, I'm good at winging it. Well, you know, we can wing it to, to some extent, but we're never our best selves when we wing it. We're, we're just not. We, we are our best selves when we have a plan, we have a strategy, we follow it, we're practiced, and we're not having that internal voice going on in our head thinking about, well, what do we want to say next? Or, um, or, or boy, I just wish you would finish your sentence so I could share my brilliance with you. No, there's none of that. We can be 100% present when we are practiced. When Let's expand on that just a little. I want to pull on that thread a little bit more. Um, there's the idea of practicing until I kind of got it down. And then there's the idea of practicing until it's really built into my my deep into my nature, right? Where, where it's, 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 it's in, incredibly deeply ingrained. The problem is to get to that latter stage, it requires working past the point of discomfort. Can you talk just a little bit about that and the role that our desire for comfort uh, plays and how it can very much hinder us? Because I think most people think they're practicing or maybe they think they're practicing long enough. They're, they're really not. Talk, talk a little bit about why this extended practice is so important? Well, look, it's about what we need to do is we need to do it again and again and again and again and again. And so there's no doubt in our mind what we're going to say, when we're going to say it, or whatever the case may be. And there was a great quote, and it was a famous basketball coach, and don't ask me who it was because I don't remember. But anyway, there was a great quote uh, by uh, this this coach that said, on any given day, we're either getting better or we're getting worse. And that just really resonates with me because uh, getting better is a choice. It is a choice we can make. And practice is uncomfortable. And so we can choose, and we're comfort creatures, right? We all know we're comfort creatures. We like it when things are easy. And it's so easy for us to just hit that easy button and phone it in or whatever the case may be. But we are our best selves when we when we grow the most is when things get uncomfortable. So we have to look for ways to continue to grow our, our craft and our skills. And and the best way to do that certainly though is is repetition, doing it again and again and again. You you are one of the hardest working professionals that I've ever met. Did did that just come naturally to you in your career? Is it just hardwired that that achievement drive, or is it something that you've really had to work at? Well, I, I love to think that I do have the drive and, I, and I'm a self-starter by nature. Mm -hmm. But I think part of that is, is that I, I've always enjoyed what I, I've done for a living. I, I find it fun. Um, I, I'm energized by it. 
And so when you are passionate about something and you're clear on your why and why you're doing it, what it is that you're doing, I think that that also contributes to that. I think that also adds additional uh, energy and the desire to continue to, to grow and to get better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think a, a little bit, um, boy, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's nature, nurture or what it is, but um, yeah. yeah. But it works for you uh, for sure. Uh, let, let, let me ask you this, whether you're, you know, you're a warranty rep that has to deliver bad news to a customer or a mortgage loan officer who has to go back and ask for yet more documentation and paperwork or a salesperson explaining why we can't alter a floor plan, you know, whatever it is, presentation skills go much deeper than what we think of in terms of standing in front of a group and giving a talk. But let me ask you, do the principles remain the same, especially the preparation principles? I mean, should, should it, should a builder literally practice out loud how to deliver how to deliver a message about construction delays to a customer, for example? Oh my heavens! Absolutely, yes, 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 yes. Everyone should be practicing. It, it kind of goes back to confidence, though. Uh, I'm going to have to deliver a message, whatever message I'm going to be delivering to the customer, and ultimately, my message is going to affect the customer's experience. What sort of experience do I want that person on the other end, whether it's an internal customer or an external customer? What kind of experience do we want them to have? And they're going to be looking to us uh, to, to see our energy level, uh, what's the message going to be like. And that comes, the best experience comes from the practiced voice. Uh, I'm judging our buyers are judging us. Right. And so we only have that quick uh, one-tenth of a second to make a great first impression. Yeah, right. Uh, and when you think about the idea of practicing it in advance, do you really want to practice it for the first time with a customer? I mean, I mean, even for you, for, forget about how this is going to go for the customer for just a moment. Wouldn't you be so much more comfortable having already said it out loud? And along those lines, can you you just, this is something I know we talk about a lot at Shore Consulting, talk about the benefits of practicing into a voice recorder or videotaping uh, your practice sessions. Yeah. Well, tonality of voice. When you're able to be on a voice recorder and you record your message in practice and then you listen back, what's happening with the tonality of your voice? What's your energy like? A a lot of times a a customer can pick up, or you can tell a lot by listening back. I mean, when a telemarketer calls us, for example, you know who's confident, you know who's not confident. Uh, you know if somebody is smiling. You know if somebody's not. You you can tell. You can read the energy uh, simply by the tonality. So it's very important for us to practice uh, on the voice recorder. Record yourself. Every phone has a voice recorder. You can just simply record yourself. Play it back. Does that sound like you? Are you you being your authentic self? We'll we'll know very quickly uh, just by listening back to that recording. Well, I'll tell you what, it has been such a joy for me to work with you here over these last few years and to uh, really benefit from watching your presentation skills, but also the work ethic that goes into it. I know ultimately our clients are better off for it. We appreciate you and uh, really always good uh, spending a a little time with you, my friend, for sure. Thanks, Jeff. You too. There you go. Well, there you go. Another episode of the Builder 365 podcast. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, We just asked you to do one thing. Share it out. Let people know. Let people in your organization know. Let your your building superintendent, your warranty reps, your mortgage officers, let people know that the Builder 365 podcast is there as an opportunity to celebrate the business that we love so very much. In the meantime, go out and change someone's world. Thanks, everybody. (laughs) 